Okay, the, the one that we have is, which one, anyone remember? What did we cover? Weighted? Yeah, that's the only one or anything else? Yeah, that's the only one. Yeah, weight-based routing policy. So based on the weight number that we are giving, so it will respond to the end users based on the percentage so if you want to distribute the load between two to three environments so we can give this load based on this 50 50 will be in other words, so this is where what we used right okay let's move on what's other routing policy that we have Okay, let's try to create the other one, the second one, and in that we have a latency based uh, uh, routing policy. So what this actually does for us. So in this we saw that we are manually mentioning that 50% you go there and 50% of the people you get and uh, go to this uh, environment, but now it is a latency based. So let's imagine that we have in a two to three environments across the globe and if you are trying to access from the India whichever is nearest to you you will get that uh, not nearest whichever is getting the fastest response and um, that will be you will get so route 53 will continuously check who is giving the fastest response out of all the environments all all the records that we give in so then he will respond to uh, the user with the whoever is quickly responds. So like it's amazing. I mean, let's imagine that from high tech city to uh, our Ramoji film city, we can go through outer ring road and we can go through within the city. But if you go to the outer ring road, you will, even though it is fastest, I mean, even though it is the longest route through outer ring road, but you will reach the Ramuji Film City is in, I mean, a little bit faster than uh, going through uh, within the city. So that's so. Even though if you have a fast, but it will based on the response time from the destination, so it will respond to the end user. Like, let's try to create sample record on it. <clears throat> let's see it. Let's create latency and let's put LAT is the name of that our application and uh, let's give you some fake address here like um, 1122 or you can give all one once and latency base let's imagine which in which region that we are in. let's put something in Mm, EU. Let's put something in Europe. One setup and use something. And for Europe regions, we plan in Europe region we have a one. Okay, EU. And let's create one more. So we can test it. LET latency based and two two da two two da two two da two two. Okay latency base let's put something in us one okay okay so we created two records one is in uh, europe and one is in us so what it will do when we try to access this lat.cloudcoach.in and whoever is responding first, we will get it. So ideally, for Europe region, we should get the response from Europe location, Europe region, right? If anyone trying from nearby London or Ireland or somewhere in nearby Russia, they will get uh, a response from the Europe. Uh, they will get the uh, that one one dot one one dot. If somebody is nearby US, US East, US West. 
all these guys should get one one I mean the other one what's the created that is two 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 let's see what it will get by checking that so latency and latency dot cloud put dot in okay let's fetch it hmm. United States we got it uh, United States executive workshop we got it to do to in it to Chicago we have a what is that Chicago Chicago got somewhere in London one okay good and uh, all nearest US ideally got this one but check this London London got one one and France nearest UK so it's got one Germany one and Spain and almost nearest to that and Australia Australia also got a London one so like that this Australia got US one right double two double two two whoever is having the fastest network to their location they will get this so do you understand this latency based routing so if you have an environment two environments one is in US same kind of environment one is in US and one is in UK for if you try to access across the globe whoever is responding fast you will be directed to that IP address so this is what the results are any questions on this so we'll move to other routing policy Okay, good. I believe that you understand. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So, what is the other routing policy that we have? Geolocation. This is very simple to understand. So, if somebody is trying to access from India, we can, uh, I mean, we can restrict them to, not restrict, we can direct them to the server which is hosted in India. I mean, whatever it is. So, we can direct them if if they are from China we can direct them to reach to something else so let's see how we can create that does anyone place online Rami the letter concert confirm there are some sites which are not, I mean, if you open this uh, Microsoft.com, they have in different languages, right, Microsoft.com. So if you try to access Microsoft.com from China, you will get the Chinese language Microsoft.com. In France, you will get in French language. So how they are achieving that? It's all based on from where you are trying to access, you will be routed to that IP address, that server. So that's what with geolocation we can get it. Let's create geo and same address will be there but based on the source you will get it the IP address. So how DNS knows that you are from the you are from latency I thought we created it right. Okay, let's create geo now. Geo. One 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 one. So which country you want to create this geolocation? So for India people, I want to get this one one one. Okay, let's type India here. Set it. It can be ten. So what this means, let's create one more, then you should be able to understand, see. GU, same application, we have a 22.22.22.22. And if we have, 
geolocation again China okay what this means to us now we created an application called geo cloud quotes dot in but it has two different types what did we done so if we access this from India you will get one 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 if you if you try to access this site from the China it will be directed to two 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 so why it's like that so the uh, the requirement that I told right I mean if it is Chinese people they are trying to access you will get the Chinese language website in France you will get France so like that we will get the different kinds of uh, environments we can publish so how DNS knows that this IP is the requester IP is from China so it's a global uh, database will have everyone knows that I mean technically and every country have a dedicated set of IP sets so we should be knowing this IP is from this country so they have a database kind of so we can access it and see this is from the this country okay, that's the reason in backend it will use that and it will identify this IP is from China so for these guys it should be displayed 1 1 or 2 2 I mean China in here we display 2 2 so let's try to see this let's try to create one more in US G U London let's create 2 to London this okay London will give 5555 five, five, five. Five. let's turn that who's that sorry it's fine uh, uh, United Kingdom. Let's give that. So we created three records, and for we dedicated these for the three countries. Okay, let's see what the results that we will get. Same application. We are trying from a different location by using this global checker. Geo cloud search dot in. Okay, geo cloud coach dot in. Excellent. So, search. Hmm. United Kingdom. Yeah, this fellow has five 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 five. Excellent. So, what about India and China? What is this India? Bharati broadband is not yet updated but it will and sometimes it will take time guys to replicate especially one two three China right so China should be working fine to right China yeah do you have a yeah China any com let's put something for Italy Gio. Six six dot six six dot six six dot six six and Chio Italy Okay, we will leave these records at this place and we will check after a few minutes. Okay, then we will move on to another uh, routing policy. Okay, just leave it. It's just taking the time to propagate across the globe. That's it. 
okay we don't do anything in this and we'll wait for the changes to replicate so what is the other routing policy that we have we saw weight based latency whoa we have multi value answer did we see this yesterday I think this is something new uh, new yeah, yeah it's no. multi value answer hmm. let me try this okay let's finish this and then we'll go on to that I don't know that but we can get it easily not a big deal so the fourth one that we have is failover it's really useful okay so failover how we can do the failover that means it's an active passive kind of regard so let's imagine that you have a one application in Europe same application and you have an S one or more application I mean same application somewhere in um, somewhere in uh, Singapore so if this primary was failed then it should automatically fail over to Singapore server so how we can do that so let's do that I will try to log into one more AWS account I want to launch this in here okay so for this we can really check this because we can launch two servers in two different locations micro servers and install Apache on it or whatever it is and install one IS default page on it so we can really check these locations so it's failover right so Excellent. Amen. Okay, what I'm doing just now, I mean now is I will launch one instance in somewhere in London. So default is London. So what I will do, I will launch one server here. Okay, so let's launch it. Load balancer. Why did I create it? Load balancer here. Uh, Okay, do you know that what is what is AMI? What is AMI, guys? I need to stop teaching. Tell me, what is AMI? Yeah, mission image. Amazon machine image. Correct. What I'm doing just now. Creating a new instance with the image. Correct. Thank you very much. Okay, just launch one machine here and uh, let me go to the another region you can launch same machines here but you can do that real time so let's go to the Mumbai and launch once so it's easy to go to Mumbai London Ireland sitting on place really love this console even though if you're not really traveling you can say hey, let's go to Mumbai let's go to Ireland yes so let's try to start this free tire eligible Windows machine. Why I'm launching a Windows machine? So just to we can easily understand the switch over, right? If it's if we launch both the Linux machines, what will happen? I mean, uh, maybe we don't recognize, right? Uh, whether it's really failover. If you launch that, then it's easy to once it is failover, we'll get a Windows page, Windows default page. 
So I'm just launching two instances in two regions. Okay. And we will do the failover concept here. Okay. We don't have a key page. It's a new account that I create. I keep charging for the old account. So it's been five years that I'm using that account. So they are charging me for every instance that I started. So I again created a free tag. So maybe at least I can avoid some billing for these labs. Otherwise, I need to pay for the most of the amount. Okay. So I just launched two machines. In one is in Mumbai and one is in London. So I will uh, install in this. We should be having an uh, Apache by default. Um, this Windows machine, we will log in and set up a default IIS on it. Okay. Let's see how we can do that. So copy and let's get a Windows password. So it's sign some time. So we'll cover a small theory before that. So while creating this failover, there is a one task that we need to do before we create it. What is that? So how it can recognize? The failover, the primary, let's imagine that we have two setups, right? Let's make it one is a primary because it's an active passive kind of thing. One will be primary. If that fails, then it will it will redirect us to uh, one more machine. So how this root 53 knows that the primary one failed? Okay, so for that, what they have given is to check whether the primary was active or not, we need to integrate that with a health check. So what is the health check? So we can create a port checking on AT port because we are trying to access this uh, uh, IS default page. So we can continuously check IS works default on AT, Apache default AT. So We'll try to ping that port is responding or not every five, every uh, minute or that based on the duration that I have. So it will continuously check. If it is recognized that, oh, this port is not responding, so I need to make sure I need to fail over to other instance. So how can I, if anybody requests the next time, then it will respond to, oh, this is actually your IP, not this one. So this is how it responds. So how we can create a health check? Where we need to create and here itself in root 53 under hosted zones we have an health checks here. So once we install this default page on Windows, we will try to create a health check. So I already have a health check here. Let's delete this. I don't want that. Okay, so let's try to connect to that machine, Windows machine now, and then we will go to so get Windows password. Downloads number decrypt. Yeah, we have a password. Copy. Close it. Right click. Connect. Download RDP and click on it. So I'll have that it's ready for us and connect it. Lovely. So you know all this, right? You're launching Windows machine, connecting it, and getting the password using the PEM key. Why will why we will create a custom AMIs? Anybody remembers? Why we will create a custom AMI? Oh, For, to create, uh, if you want to create a repeater like the same uh, configuration, I mean, same uh, system with the configuration, then we can use the image. 
Yes, exactly. So for the repeat, we can avoid the uh, software installations. Mm. Yes, good, good. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> I mean, this definitely people will ask these questions. Okay, it's taking time to do that. Okay, right. Right. Ah, yes, right. Uh, what is that? Oh. It's not giving the... What to choose? Previous. Let's select this. Okay, next, next, next. Next, install. I just install. I'm not putting any uh, this here, any any application here. Just installing the web server that is IIS. So like Apache, we will get the default page so we can able to see that. That's the only reason. So we'll fail over between Linux and Windows. So ideally, people will have the same application. So for identification, whether it's really fail over between these two, I install one Linux and one Windows. So in real time, both will be the same pages, right? Ideally, that's the purpose. Otherwise, we don't do that. Okay, so I just install. It may take a few seconds to get this done. You know, let's try whether it is coming up for the default page. Did mm. I install that or not? Why it's... What happened to that control? Site configured. Let's try our uh, Windows Linux machine. Uh, to to open in another window. And in Linux, because we use our custom AMI, and it should be fine. It should be. Apache is in a default installation, right? So the user custom AMI in that we have an Apache. So if you click it, we should get our test page. Excellent. This is lovely. So why we don't have this? What did I select it mean? Uh, did you open up the port? Uh, ah, good question. I believe I did. 80 and 22. Oh, this is London, yeah. right? Oh, one second. One second. We are in London. One second. And this, I think I opened. I believe I opened. Yes. Ah, oh, yeah. I opened RDP and 80. Yes, I did open that. So I'm not sure whether it was installed or not. Yeah. Okay, let's log in. I mean, I'm not sure whether we add rules to, to it. Next. Next. I think uh, you need to reboot the Windows machine after. Uh, but here the IP address is defining different. This is LAN IP, right? This is a local IP. We have a public case here signed automatically, so we can, the local IPs are called, are not routable. Hmm. I think its installation was not succeeded. Just try it again, no issues. Hmm. Generally, in on-premise, actually, no, we need to re reboot the server, right, uh, no, after um, installing any features? Uh, not really. Uh, some applications need IAS, it installed. Okay, 843. Okay. I think it's there. Uh -huh. Nothing to go. Oh. 
Hmm. So IEC is installed. I think it will come up now. Ah, it's it's came right. Okay. It just took yeah. some time. Okay. Now we have in a Windows machine. We have an Apache. I mean a Linux machine. Both are running. One is in London. One is in Mumbai. So let's go back to other controls. So try to create these records. Let's try to create a health check here. Okay. Create a health check and name it app 01 and endpoint will be I use IP address and the protocol is I think we can check TCP and IP address is copy this one and put this yep I can check just port whether this is responding or not. If you have a page on it like monitor.html kind of thing, we can directly check that as well. Okay, let's create this. There is an advanced configuration. I just want to reduce the time interval from 30 seconds to 10 so we can get the faster response. Okay, TCP 30, 30, excellent. Do we need to create an alarm? No, not needed. Okay, so now it is showing unknown, so let's wait for a few seconds. It will be, meanwhile, we will create those records. Okay, what records? The hosted zone, now we have a health check created, and now you need to go to cloudcoach.in and create those active failover. So let's put app. Zero one. No, what are this? App, app, app thirty. App thirty. Let's give it. So, what is the value of it? It should be this one, right? What is this? What is this IP? This is the line Windows machine IP, right? So, if you try to access this app thirty by default, it will. It will you it should go to the Windows machine. Okay. Not geolocation failover. Okay. Failover. And you associate with health check. This is the option that we need to do extra here. Health check and you have an app 01. That is the name of the health check that we created and it's giving that. Health check and create it. Okay, what's the other one? App 30. And what is the IP address of it? Linux machine. Copy this. Go back here and put here. So, failover and make it select this one as secondary. Okay, for secondary, we need to keep a health check because it doesn't need to check whether secondary is active or not. If it's primary failover, it can. We can implement, but we no need to here, and it's not mandatory. So, we have created two records for app 30. One is pointed to Windows machine with health check enabled. One is pointed to Linux machine. So, by default, if you type app 30, we should get a Windows machine. If not, then it should get the Linux machine. Let's see this health check is done or not. Okay, excellent. So now it is showing green. And let's app 30. Try to open this. App 30. Excellent. See here? Now, if we type app 30, we are getting the Windows machine. So, how we can test this failover concept? So, if you shut down this machine, right? If you shut down this machine or stop IA service on this machine, we should get the Linux patch for the Linux page for the same URL. Okay. So, let's, I think we are there in this. Let's... Uh, 
where we have this file storage services okay let's stop this I just stopped it okay that means we should not get this page so it will take time because its site can't be reached why it's not gone to Linux machine because the still health check is showing green so we need to wait yeah, for a yeah. few seconds we'll, yeah we will need to wait for a few seconds so once it is becoming unhealthy then it will point us to Unix app let's wait until it's become unhealthy But technically, it will check for every 10 seconds, no? Yeah. But Banu, I mean, uh, you know, I saw that there is a one minute, five seconds is rate up, right? One minute? One minute, five seconds. So I think while creating the record set or health check, and I, I forgot. No, no, I mean, the time. Um, uh, Okay, there are two places we have this time. So if in hosted zones, we can, uh, while creating, there is a TTL value. Might be you are referring to that one. Okay. okay. So if you select that, is that one? If it is a five, then if definitely not. This is a 300 seconds of that. Okay. okay. So, what's the other one that you have seen? If we come here, yeah, it's gone unhealthy. Okay? It's gone unhealthy. The health check. So, because we shut down that IA service on Windows machine, so it's not, it should not respond to AT port. Okay, let's see this, what it will say to us. App 30. Come on. You know it. Okay, let's open in. There will be a default catch, might be. So let's open in different control in this here. You try. You guys, you try from your end. So you should get the Linux app. I'll message. Definitely you'll get Linux. It's only, it's not even take this long for you guys. Because I tried from my end. So there will be a catch for a few minutes on my local system. Yeah, it's a Linux page for me. Yeah? Yes. So everyone will get the Linux page. Because I might have a local cache for the DNS, so it will take some few minutes to refresh it. But you guys will get the Linux. Okay, this is how it works, the failover. Okay? So, okay, let me... Yes, Vijay. Uh, okay, and uh, how many seconds uh, that we can uh, you know create? Like uh, here in, in this uh, in this uh, you know, the example actually we created uh, one active and one passive, right? All right. My question is how many we can create? Like how many secondaries? How many secondaries? Uh, good question. Even I never tried how many secondaries. Active have a failover would be fine ideally. Let's see. So if you had one more secondary, 
then ideally we need to uh, go with health check right otherwise it doesn't make uh, sense even for secondary so it can check on secondary which one is active one uh, which one is uh, app 30 some failover on the secondary let's put some fake IP on there Uh, it's uh, okay, so set, 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 it's, it's already exists only one primary and secondary not mm -hmm. create anymore see here okay. type set but it's already exists type means it's a secondary right? hmm okay. in real time uh, People re is really use the failover. Yeah, people will use it. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, instead of directly going on the fly failover, uh, they might use the load balances or something like connecting to the domain, and they will be manage the internal servers. Yeah, I mean, in real time application, they might not, but uh, sometimes people will use for different purpose. So. If automatically, if they want to display a page, this site is temporarily out of service, please, um, I mean, uh, you regret for the inconvenience, these kind of messages we get, right? So we can host that page on S3 and direct that if the main site is down, it's automatically redirected to the down page. Okay. In, in, uh, technically, in the real time, if it is yeah. on a very big website, that yeah, they will maintain internal services, right? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, they will maintain. Yeah. And they never think of this failover. Ideally, I mean, they will manage its high availability. I mean, we just yeah. want to you. We just need to know that oh, this kind of facility is also there. So, whenever there is a requirement, you should strike. Oh, okay, maybe you can implement this. So you can use it for. Mm -hmm. I think we can. For DR, right? Disaster recovery. Yeah, disaster recovery. Yes, can be planned. So you ask, right? When we have want to move to another region, so the snapshots of database and snapshot of the entire EBS, I mean entire instances, can be copied to another region itself. Okay, another region. So if you have CLI, you can automate that. So if you copy that entire application, whatever you have at this location can be copied to another region with few minutes. So you can build entire application there in another region. Okay. So, yeah, go on. Yeah, Bano, I have, I'm a, um, uh, can we use this failover for databases also? Uh, no. Database have an, a database have a multi-AG failover. I mean, if you are uh, referring to that, I mean, there is a possibility we can use it, but uh, we have a multi-AG failover. Database, ideally we will use a, I mean, uh, uh, we, we can't maintain the multiple copies of it, right? So that should be another mechanism. These are stateless contents that we have. The web servers, what will happen, you just copy it. But whereas database, we should be read and write access. So oh, it's like multi-AG, uh, we'll see that options. So whenever if you lose the entire region, entire availability zones, we have a, uh, this uh, uh, automatically that in another instance will be uh, connected to your DNS. I mean, uh, it has an, a um, multi-AZ concept. So, it by default, it will launch two instances and replicate each other. That's it within the value, within the region, but across the region, we can't do that. So, we can copy this database and automate that copying and uh, uh, restoring process, we can automate and then maybe you can, whenever there is an issue, then we can point our application to that. Teams multi-value answer is answering for the uh, multiple health checkups. Ah, multi they announced it today only. They, they announced it today? 
Yeah. And that's the reason. We didn't see this yesterday. Yeah. Suddenly they put this service. This is far, this fast, this AWS people are working, guys. I mean, multiple answer. Multiple answer. Route 53. Hmm. Four hours ago. June 21st. <laughs> Amazon Route 50 announced support for multiple answers in response to DNS queries. We are examining these fellows just yesterday, right? Uh, okay, what I'll do is I will just check it out. What is the possibility of uh, doing the lab? I will see whether we can delete it does that or we can use any fake IPs. I'll see and I will let you know. Okay, so Let's move on. So these are the four. I think they launched this feature yesterday. So this is it with DNS guys. So uh, uh, we will can you show us? Uh, actually, uh, yesterday we were trying to be uh, move the domain from GoDaddy to here, and the transferring or diverting. Can you show that part? What did we try? Yesterday, you were trying to log into the GoDaddy to move the DNS from GoDaddy to Route 53. Mm, did I? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can do that. I think I... GoDaddy... GoDaddy... I think I forgot my login. Try it. Seems it need the username or customer ID not the mail like yeah we are in we are in okay excellent so i'm in okay. so i have an i have and for test purpose what i did is i purchased the domain that is pitdudecloud.com from goodaddy okay but i hosted the dns name at root 53 so how we can do that yeah. Sorry guys, it was a pause. Okay, so how we can tell, so anybody registered any domain? I mean, do you know how to register a domain? Yes. Okay, good. So, I mean, in once we purchase, where are we? Where is this code ID? Okay, here I am. So, once you just enter your details, I mean, if you identify what is the free domain that you have, uh, and uh, once you purchase it, so you the console will be like this. So, once you have it, um, you will have an option to manage the name servers of it. Okay, so domains, click on manage. And in manage, you have a DNS management option. So manage DNS. Okay, if you just click on here on GoDaddy, you will have an option to put your your Amazon name servers here how did I enter is I just clicked on change and entered the ones that I created here in route 53 if you go to the hosted zones pedu cloud.com if you click here 
you'll have all this four should be same as this let's copy this so you can see easily on this let me copy and notepad Yep, it's copied on like this part. Okay, these are the four domain name servers. Okay, from Amazon. When I create it, it's launched on these four servers. Okay, so let's go back to uh, this my meeting. Ah, where is this? Okay, if you go to this place and if you open it, see here name servers 782 aws dns 32.net these four are given here so let's let's do this again hosted zones okay hosted zones click here select this delete zone confirm you must first delete all the record sets in that. I don't need all the record Why I need to delete? You buy a domain, guys. I mean, it's it won't cost you much. Just hundred rupees. Just select the cheapest one. Make sure you don't select any other plans, and buy it. And you can do the, all these tests. So you can uh, get to buy it. Um, okay, now I'll go to this and delete hosted zones. Confirm. Okay, let's imagine. I mean, we are at starting page now. So we just purchase the domain, and it will be by default when you purchase the domain, it will have an a their own DNS servers. GoDaddy DNS servers will be there. But now what we are planning to do is, well, okay, I buy a domain from you, but I don't want to keep my DNS servers with you. I want to buy my own, I want to keep this zone file in my own DNS servers because I own AWS, so it will be very easy to manage the DNS. So I will create, I will manage my own DNS servers. So how can I do that? So once you purchase this, the next step is once you purchase here, come here, Create a hosted zone. Okay, what is the domain that you purchase? Pitduclaw.com. Sorry, Pitdu not dot Pitducloud.com. What are the name it is? Just look for that. Pitducloud.com. Right. So we just created a pitducloud.com and no comments, so just create it. That's it. Once you create it, it will it will display the name servers of that. So what this means is it it will have a because it's a high available DN name servers, it will have a hundreds of name servers behind the screens. But for us, it will be installed on uh, the zone will be created on these four name servers. So it will have a, the server will have a name server installed on it. Will have it these. Uh, um, we'll have, this zone will be created in backend. But let's copy this and paste it in this place. Let's delete this and paste here. These are the new servers. Okay, if you see that, control, control, chat, control, chat, chat. Okay, we didn't get that. Okay. Okay. These are the new name servers in AWS it hosted all our uh, this uh, peddukloud.com so we just need to put these info copy this info and update this name servers place so let's come back here these are the old servers guys so copy paste here come here Copy. Paste here. Okay. 
for whoever is working on cloud I mean it's it's good you know this this kind of things okay so just save it that's it what we did is we purchased a domain and we hosted that domain name server in Amazon route 53 so we link it what are the modifications that we made here so it will be replicated across the globe now if you add a record app app 30 so one one two two one 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 so if you do this create it so you will have all that so if you type this app 30 dot the cloud dot com it should I mean it will take some time because we we change the DNS servers itself in GoDaddy so these are what is GoDaddy what exactly we can call technically GoDaddy is a domain registrar domain registrar and even route 53 I mean Amazon is domain registrar that means across the globe there is a domain registrar authority if you go there and ask them boss I want to become a go that domain registrar authority so they will they have a licensing policy and these things so they will give access to the global domain modifications list they have a global uh, DNS servers list they will manage it so they will get the authorization from them and while looking for any new domain it will query the entire database that they have and look for is the domain registered already yes or no no then go and give this answer to these people okay then you can buy this domain like that code RD is a domain registrar as well as they are doing a hosting that's another thing but GoDaddy is a domain registrar. So that's the reason we are able to buy. Network Solutions is a domain registrar. These kind of things. There are many domain registrars will be there. But they are linked with getting a license from the global authorization uh, center. Okay. So that so we purchase the domain and we tell them but the but I purchased the domain, but I am keeping or I am managing my DNS servers on route 53. How did we link with these two? Create a zone in Amazon Route 53 and update the name servers that Amazon Route 53 has given in GoDaddy in DNS management. So then we are linking with that information will be updated across the globe. So once everyone knows these are the name servers of this GoDaddy then it will uh, direct those I mean, directly they will come to route 53 and try to get the answers so now if you go to this place and uh, pit to clo beauty dot com and instead of a record you can try for the name servers name servers record is ns so set it one one six is that the new ones oh excellent it's already updated the DNS records so if you try this app what is the app that we created app 30 app 30 dot 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 com so I'm trying to do this okay let's copy this and try to resolve this IP it should give what is the IP it should give now one 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 this is supposed to give that <laughs> app 30 P D D U C. choose the app yeah it is uh, selected to the name server. Hmm? Oh, it's yeah, right. Correct, man. Thank you for correcting it. Yeah, so now we are getting one one, right? This is as expected, right? This is how we can move the name servers from GoDaddy to root 53. So whatever you update here, then we are able to get it resolved.
You got it? Yeah. And I also can show how to connect to the S3 bucket. Divert and redirecting to the S3 bucket. How to? Uh, accessing the S3 bucket static website access. Ah, you want to see how we can, if I click with the cloud, it should go to S3 bucket? Yeah. And it should not show the uh, same link over there, right? Uh, okay. Yeah, that we can do. That I think I already have that set up. Okay, cloud coach dot in. See, hello, this Bono test website. This is what I have. So how we can create this? I'll give an article. You just go through that. Is that fine, or you want to see that? It's fine. That's fine. Is that fine? Okay. So this is very simple. Okay, because uh, then you can I have created the bucket and also I made it to the static website now in my mm -hmm. practicals. Mm -hmm. I just need to be map it both. That's it. Okay, excellent. So cloud coach. I mean, the, you need to make sure the bucket is named with domain name. Otherwise, it okay. won't work. So the bucket name also should be cloud coach dot in. This is the index file. And also, you need to create a two two buckets with www.cloudcoach.in and uh, just cloudcoach.in and convert them as I mean you know static enabling, right? So one yeah. of it you can uh, keep the data and one of it you can redirect come to this place. So how we can redirect in properties static web hosting? This is the default page. Okay, whenever you type here. So this this we will put it. So if somebody type www.cloudcoacher.in, so see here what is in www.cloudcoacher.in, it will come here. But you no need to put this here. You can delete it still work. How? I'll show you. Delete this. Okay. If somebody type here in properties, ah, I didn't put the redirect. Oh, it's already there. So, put uh, cloud coach dot in so it can redirect to this place. Use this bucket to web hosting, and also we have a redirect request. You can keep the both data in both buckets, or you can redirect it to this. Redirect is the best option. That's the ideal way of doing it. So, somebody type cloud coach dot in or www dot cloud coach dot in, they will go to the cloud coach dot in bucket. Okay, why know. why we need the two buckets? We can can we not the directly map the uh, domain to cloud coach dot in? No, that's uh, the way that they designed. They might have mm -hmm. some limitation in backend. Okay. So if you see the articles, I mean you can just follow it. That's the only difference. If you don't get it, so let me know. We'll create a Pedu dot cloud, right? Pedu cloud. For that, I can create. I will create the same thing. Okay, just S3. Okay, I will. I will do that. I will research on it. And yeah, I'll, I'll give the link. S3 static website hosting. I'll give the exact URL. So from the AWS hosting. Yeah, and this is the one. Let me see that. Uh, using your own domain. Yeah, this is setting up a static person using custom domain. Yes, this is one. Okay, just follow this, guys. If not, let me know. We will do it tomorrow. Okay. Okay, it's very simple. Only two steps you need to do extra. The bucket name and you just need to forward that. In one of it, you just need to enable to forward that. That's it. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, guys, and it's done for today. Have a nice day, and we'll touch base again tomorrow. Bye. Thanks, Thank you. Bye.